Good evening, YouTube or BookTube. I still don't know if I am considered a BookTuber since I watch BookTube and I watch it pretty consistently and I'm never mentioned in BookTube anymore. So I consider myself a YouTuber. And so, and a bookworm, a book collector, a book lover, uh, a book freak. I just love books, and so that's why I make these videos. And this video today is, it's a Monday. It's a Monday. It is November the 1st, 2021. It is 548 in the evening here in West Michigan. It's been like a cold day. It was like 47 degrees, but it was a mix of sun and clouds. But uh, supposed to snow this week our first snow so here in West Michigan so this video is primarily it's not gonna be a Monday reads because uh, I have a lot of used books I mentioned in one of my recent videos I had a stack of books at the book nook as you know the book nook is the local library used bookstore where I've been volunteering for years and a week ago maybe two weeks ago a box of books came in and I saw some I wanted and I asked the lady who runs the book nook to how much she would charge me for them and then I bought them. I bought them last week. Last week I think it was went last week Wednesday or Thursday so I thought I'd show you that and then uh, last week my wife and I we went it was a nice day and my wife wanted to go to thrift stores in Hudsonville. My wife also buys used books and we went out for lunch. It was kind of like, it was a nice day, nice weather. It wasn't raining. So we went to Hudsonville, which is east of us, about, I don't know, maybe 10 miles. And they have thrift stores there and we visit those thrift stores. And we visit the Hudsonville Library. They have a little thing of books, used books. And we went to a couple of thrift stores and I found some used books. And uh, so I'm not going to show you in this video what I've been reading or what I've got in the mail. I've gotten some used books in the mail. But I'm just going to show you what I got at the book nook first. And then I'm going to show you what I found at thrift stores with my wife. One thing I put aside at the book nook was this. This is John Gosworthy's The Foresight Saga and that's the first three volumes of this. This this is really an old set but it's in perfect condition. It came out in 1969. It was in a box and um, sadly the woman the it was the box was thrown away which I wish she hadn't but I don't know some people just don't realize the importance of having it in a box. But I have the individual volumes. This is the first three volumes in the Foresight Saga. You know, I've been reading The Man of Property. And then is the In a Chancery. And then To Let. And then he did three more. I think the same characters are in it. Uh... This is the fourth volume of the Foresight Chronicles, The White Monkey. And then he did The Silver Spoon, the fifth volume of the Foresight Chronicles. And then this one is Swan Song, The Foresight Chronicles. So I bought these. She charged me $6 for them, so like a dollar a volume, which is a real steal. So in a perfect condition. Nothing wrong with it, even though they're 1969. So I got those at the book nook. And then here's the books I had her set, set aside and for her to price. And this is one of them. I have the I have Law of the Writings of Richard Hofstetter, but I didn't have his essay, The Paranoia, The Paranoid Style in American Politics, Politics and Other Essays. I didn't have that essay and uh, I'm not sure if I have these other essays in my other books by him. But I got this. I think she charged me $2 for it. 
in Hofstetter, he wrote one of my favorite books, uh, Anti-Intellectualism in America. And uh, he's one of my favorite American intellectual historians. And then when I was in college, I was really into the, uh, the theater or the theater, the abstract, absurd German theater, and I was really into Breck. So I got this Breck and his method by Frederick Jameson. Uh, I, I don't know, it was in the box and I just grabbed it. It looks a little bit over my head, but I wanted to put it with my Breck collection. And then uh, The Opium War Through Chinese Eyes by author Wally. Wally was, he hung around with the Bloomsbury Group and he wrote books on Chinese poetry and other books back in, this came out in, this first came out in, oh, I don't know. Well, this was published in 1958 first but I think it, it came out earlier. It might have not. Anyway, Opium War Through Chinese Eyes by author Wally. Uh, I collect books like this. I have another book on the Chinese and English Opium Wars over there. So I just wanted to add it to my collection. Then, as you know, I just showed you, I, I got a little book by Walker Percy. And this was in the box too, Walker Percy, Signpost in a Strange Land. It's like his essays and uh, his nonfiction pieces uh, edited by, uh, yeah, he wrote the novel, Walker Percy, The Movie Goer, The Last Gentleman, Love in Ruins, Lancelot, The Second Coming, The Thanlos Syndrome, uh, Lost in the Cosmos is the one I found recently but this one I didn't have in my Walker Percy collection so I grabbed it and I was really pleased to get this and then as you all know I have a huge Edmund Wilson collection but I didn't have the Edmund Wilson reader and I was really excited to get this uh, he's a man of letters and he wrote novels he wrote he wrote reviews. He uh, so these are a lot of his uh, essays and selections from his writings. It's like an anthology. And so I got this. Really excited to get this. Perfect condition. There's no none of these books had any underlining or they looked almost brand new. And then I picked up. Conversations with Susan Sentang, Sentang, edited by Leon Pogu. I can't pronounce that name. But as you know, she's one of my favorite intellectuals and writers, and I have her diaries and essays. And but this is conversations with her, interviews, things like that. For, and then. Conversations with Paul Bowles, who who wrote *The Sheltering Sky* and hung around with Ginsburg and William Burroughs and Jack Kerouac and Tangiers, and um, these are like interviews and conversations with him. I have a huge Paul Bowles collection over there, biographies, his writings. I think he was also a composer of music. So I got those, that was my thing. So then I put those aside and I got those for, um, I think all of those books cost me $32. Plus I got another book, wait a minute, I got another book, hold on. I also got this book, I had this in paperback. And this came in, The Size of Thoughts, Essays, and Other Lumber by Nicholas Baker. 
So I got this too with these ones I got. So I was excited to get a hardback and I gave the book nook my paperback. I think that was all of those. I think so. So then these are going to be, I also, these are going to be a uh, thrift store. No, this is, I, I got this from the, I think I got this from a thrift, so I, I suppose these are thrift stores. This is Edith Wharton, the, the, the Reef. This is a novel that she, she wrote, and I found out I had this in my library already. Uh, Edith Wharton is one of my favorite writers along, same time, time as Henry James. Uh, so I have a huge Edith Wharton collection, biographies, and her other writings. So I have this, but I'll probably take this to Book Nook next, this coming Friday. And then I picked this up at a thrift store, The Heartbreaker by Susan Alwich. This is a novel. I started collecting her writings, and I found out I already had a copy, The Heartbreaker by her. I like this copy better, this this uh, this cover, besides, so I'll take this one to the book nook and I'll keep this one for my collection. Then that, that day that my wife and I were out doing thrift stores, I found this biography on the, all the great prizes, the life of John Hay from Lincoln to Roosevelt. He was, uh, says here, winner of the American Academy of Dem was it? Oh, I can't pronounce the word. It's um. Anyway, it won some award from Secretary for Abraham Lincoln to Secretary of State for Theodore Roosevelt. John Hay was an essential American figure for more than a half a century, and the first full-scale bi biography of Hay. In 80 years, John Talaferi captures an extraordinary life and, and restores one of America's most amazing figures in his rightful place. Hay was witness and author of many of the most significant chapters in American history, from the birth of the Republican Party to the Civil War, the Spanish-American War, the prelude, prelude to the World War I, as an ambassador and statesman, he guided many of the country's major diplomatic initiatives at the turn of the 20th century as America established itself as a world leader. All the Great Prizes renders rich and fascinating portrait of this brilliant and American in his many worlds. You know, I like 19th century biography, especially politics, and this goes up to Lincoln, to Theodore Roosevelt. Oh, I forgot. One of the th I I also got a used book in the mail. I t I mentioned the, the Foresight Chronicles, and I got a biography on him. A used online G John G Galsworthy's Life and Art in the Alien Fortress by James Gen Genden. So I got this to go along with my John Galsworthy collection. I love biographies, you know that. And this is another biography I picked up at a thrift store. Uh, myself and other fellow, The Life of Robert Louis Stevenson. And this is by Claire Hartman. And I have several biographies of hers. Uh, she, uh, she wrote all kinds of biographies. I have three or four of them by her. Yeah, she wrote Sylvia Tansen Warner biography. She uh, she wrote other biographies that are not listed here, but this one's in perfect condition on Robert Louis Stevenson. Unfortunately, I dehauled all my books by him this summer, so all I have is a biography, but maybe I'll get more into collecting his writings again. And then, this is another Edith Wharton, The New York Stories, Edith Wharton, and the New York Review Books original. I didn't have this in my Edith Wharton collection. I have stories by her, but not in this kind of book, and I collect these, these New York Review Books. And uh, 
So yeah, so I got this at thrift store. And then I picked up a David Foster Wallace, which I didn't have, which I was really surprised. It's one I the only one I didn't have, <laughs> and it's Oblivion uh, Stories by David Foster Wallace. So that was really a fine finding this. This is really kind of completes my David Foster Wallace collection. And then I picked up a novel at a thrift store in Hudsonville, The Meaning of Night, A Confession by Michael Cox. This is like a Victorian uh, mystery, kind of Victorian mystery that takes place in London, like historical fiction. And I, I, I like reading a, about London, historical fiction that takes place in London. And, uh, and it looked really interesting. And I have other books, uh, other historical fiction that takes place in London, turn of the century, nine, like late 19th century, early 20th century. So I picked this up. And then I picked up at a thrift store, this was the complete pair, I don't know, I can't pronounce that. It's more like a, it's a memoir written by, an, an, uh, she is, I can't pronounce her name, let me see if you can see it. I can't pronounce her name, but this, this is a story of a girl Memoir of Growing Up as a Girl in Revolutionary Iran. Parasopolis provides a unique glimpse into the nearly unknown, unreachable way of life that Sarapa chose to tell her remarkable story as a gorgeous comic book makes it totally unique and indispensable. So, yeah, I don't know. It looked like a memoir. I'm not really into, into graphic books novels or memoirs or but I'm interested in the story so I picked it up so that's it I did get another I might as well it's right in front of me I might as well just show you this is a new book I got in the mail yesterday Burning Boy The Life and Work of Stephen Crane by Paul Asher I had this on pre-order for a while I have over there on my shelf I'll just show it to you. This is the Library of America edition of the writings of Stephen Crane. He died when he was 28 of tuberculosis, so he didn't write much. But this is the Library of America. Every time I see these at thrift stores or used book sales, I just grab them, especially if they're by Americans. See, it's Stephen Crane. Uh, Prose and Poetry, Maggie, A Girl of the Streets, Red Badge of Courage, Stories, Sketches, and Journalism and Poetry. So now I can put these together and on the shelf over there. I put Stephen Crane with my John Irving, Washington Irving collection, and uh, Washington Irving is one of my favorite early American 19th century writers. So that's it. So now it's 6 06 at night here on the first day of November 2021. Yeah, I've been reading all kinds of things. Of course, you know, I read Christian books in the morning and I read stuff in the afternoons, always writing in my diary. I'm doing okay. The Lord's given me grace. I'm hanging in there. I haven't flipped out yet or gone crazy. So, yeah, it's a new month. This is the first day. Yep. So, I, not, not much else to report. Not reason why I did this video is that I want to get these, put all these books away in their right collection. Like, put David Foster Wallace with David Foster Wallace, put with Edith Wharton and with Edith Wharton and Susan Howitch with her collection and 
and Nicholas Baker with his his you know everything goes in. These are not I'm not adding new books. I'm just adding to my collections in my my library. So I hope you're all doing well. I know it's been a couple of days since I made a video. To me, the days just zoom by. You know, you wake up and before you know it, it's time to go to bed. And uh, so yeah. So once again, thank you for all your comments. Do pray you're all doing well. You have a good reading week, a new month, a new good reading month. And until next time, bye.